Hey everyone, I'm back with the second video about our journey moving from San Francisco to Malaysia. Uh, the first video we made, which detailed our decision making for why we're leaving San Francisco and how we decided on Malaysia to settle in, got a ton of views, way more than I ever expected. I just want to thank everyone for liking the video, leaving a comment, and showing some support. I found it to be super valuable and I really appreciate it. So in today's video, I wanted to go over one of the main questions I kept getting in the comments, which was about the visas that we're planning to get and how we're planning to go about getting them. So what I'll do is list the available visas for foreigners who want to live in Malaysia and then focus on the four that I find to be the most appropriate for someone like us. And to recap our situation, we're a married couple with two young children, a son who's three and a daughter who is six months. We are planning to move to Malaysia, but want to continue working. So my wife works in biotech and she wants to continue to work in that industry. I have my own company in San Francisco. I want to run that remotely, but also open a company in Malaysia as well. If you're curious about moving to Malaysia or in our journey, please subscribe and I'll share all the updates with everything that we go through. There are lots of different visas available for foreigners who want to live in Malaysia. I'll list out 10 and go over the high level details for each. And finally, focus on the four that I find to be the most appropriate for someone like us. Number one, you have the employment pass. This is for someone who's an expatriate working for a company based in Malaysia. You need a company in Malaysia to apply for this visa for you. Number two is the digital nomad visa. This is popular for people who have a fully remote job, uh, is a freelancer of some type or a content creator that makes money through YouTube, for example. There's the MM2H visa, which is the Malaysia My Second Home visa. This is good for a long-term residence visa. However, you do have to commit money to a Malaysian bank and buy a property. There's the SMM2H visa, which is the Sarawak version of the MM2H. I'll cover these top four in more detail later on. Number five is the resident pass talent. This is for someone who is already on a employment pass and who wants to transition to a more long-term resident visa. Number six is the Malaysia Premium Visa Program, or PVIP. This is for high net worth individuals who is willing to commit a significant amount of money to Malaysia, but this gives you a 20-year visa, then also the option to work in the country. Number seven is the Professional Visit Pass. This is for someone working for a foreign company who's offering services. I imagine this is mostly for consultants or people who are working on special projects. And this is for 12 months. Number eight is the social visit visa. As the name suggests, this is mainly for social visits. You are allowed to stay for 12 months. And this is for, for example, taking care of a family member. You are not allowed to work under this visa. Number nine is a student visa, which is for students who are enrolled in a Malaysian educational institution. Number 10 is the spouse visa. This is for someone who is married to a Malaysian citizen. Those are the 10 visas available for foreigners. But for us, we're really focused on the top four, which is the employment visa, the digital nomad visa, and the two MM2H visas. Let's go over those in detail and explain why we chose one over the other. The employment visa is for foreigners employed by a Malaysian company. You need a contract with this company and the company has to apply for this visa for you. There are three categories depending on your skill level and experience. There is the technical, non-executive technical roles with a minimum salary requirement of 3,000 ringgit per month. You can get a visa for up to two years and there are limited renewals. Next tier is the managers and directors tier with the minimum salary requirement of 5,000 ringgit, also a two-year contract. The top level is for executives. The minimum salary requirement is 10,000 ringgit per month, and this is a five-year visa. To get this visa, you also have to prove qualifications. So either have to have a degree with three years of experience, a diploma with five years of experience, or a technical certificate with seven years of experience. Your employer must apply for this visa by registering with the immigration department, applying for a foreign worker quota approval, submit the application, and then you then have to go to a consulate or a embassy to apply for the visa. This visa allows you to bring in dependents, 
but your salary must be over 5,000 ringgit per month. And as of January of 2021, the job has to be first posted to the Ministry of Human Resources for 30 days before an expatriate can be hired. I imagine this is so that the job can go to someone local if there's talent available. This visa is only good for peninsular Malaysia, so nowhere on Borneo. And you're only allowed to work for the company specified on this visa. This will be the most ideal visa for my wife so that she can continue working at her current job without having to switch companies. There's a chance that this may happen because her company currently employs someone in Malaysia. So we assume that they are legally allowed to employ Malaysian residents. The visa that would be most appropriate for me is the digital nomad visa. This is for someone who is at least 18 years old, can prove employment with a company that allows you to be fully remote, a freelance job that you can make money from, or a company that you own that's generating income. You must prove a minimum salary or income of $2,000 per month or $24,000 for the year. And then you would get a three to 12 months digital nomad visa, which then can be renewed for 12 months. You are allowed to bring dependents on this visa. So good for families with children. The application process seems to be pretty straightforward. It's a online application. You have to submit your documents, including your CV, passport, bank statements, uh, proof of employment, a notarized letter of good conduct, higher education certificates, medical insurance certificate, and a tax registration slip. These I will have to look up specifically what they are and submit these forms when asked. You submit this application online and pay the application fee, which is 1,000 ringgit for the main applicant and 500 ringgit for each family member. Then you wait for approval, which can take up to 90 days, which is fairly short. And there are additional benefits such as access to nomad ready hubs. Not really sure what that means yet. You get discounts on accommodations, on co-working spaces, dining and tours. Sounds great to me. And also you have access to digital nomad uh, networking events. This visa is only valid on Peninsular Malaysia. So not Sabah or Sarawak, which have their own versions. And your dependents are not allowed to work. So under this visa, I would be allowed to work at my current company. However, I would not be able to work for a Malaysian company or start my own company in Malaysia. So there are some limitations. Next, I'm going to go over the Malaysia My Second Home Visa or MM2H. This is one of the most popular visas for retirees and people who are looking to stay long term because the shortest period for the visa is five years. However, it's quite complicated and there are multiple tiers. So I want to break them down one by one. This visa is considered a long-term social visit visa. So because of that, you're not really allowed to work or do business under this visa. You have to be at least 25 to apply for the visa. However, you don't have to show any minimum income, which is great. Now getting into the tiers. The lowest tier is the silver tier, which requires you to deposit at least $150,000 in a Malaysian bank. You must also buy a property of at least 600,000 ringgit. And depending on location, it may be up to 1 million rate, like in Kuala Lumpur. The financial deposit, you can use 50% of that, so $75,000, towards the down payment um, on the house and other eligible expenses, such as education, healthcare, etc. You must keep the house for at least 10 years. The only exception is if you decide to buy a more expensive house. However, if you decide to cancel your visa, you are allowed to take the money deposited back but I don't know if it affects the ownership terms of the house. I imagine it does. The application fee for this visa is 1,000 ringgit and the agent fee is 40,000 ringgit. So it's quite expensive to apply for roughly $10,000. The next tier up is a gold tier. It's a significant jump to $500,000 of initial deposit and a house purchase price of minimum 1 million ringgit. This is a 15 year visa which is three times the silver tier. However, the application fees are higher at 3,000 ringgit and the agent fee is also much higher at 55,000 ringgit. The highest tier is the platinum tier and the deposit is now 1 million US dollars. You get a 20 year visa. However, it no longer allows you to get permanent residency as it used to under the old rules. You must purchase a property of at least 2 million ringgit 
The big difference for this visa is that you are allowed to work and also invest in businesses in Malaysia. The application fee, however, is much, much higher at 200,000 ringgit for just the application fee and 70,000 ringgit for the agent fee. I think the difference of the application fee must be because this is the only MM2H visa that allows you to work and invest in businesses. There's a new tier called the Special Economic Zone, which is fairly new and not fully fleshed out. There is only one zone I know of, which is the Johor area just north of Singapore. The requirements for this visa is much lower than the other ones. I'm assuming because these are areas that are not super well developed and that's where they want people to move and put money into. The financial deposit is $65,000 if you are 21 to 49 years old and half of that $32,000 if you're over 50. It's unclear if you need to purchase property, but I imagine you do. And also this is a 10 year visa, which is double what it is for the silver tier. The downside of this visa for us is that you cannot work while you're on the MM2H visa. If you're over 50, you are allowed to work, but only part-time and only up to 20 hours a week. You are allowed to open a business in Malaysia. However, you're also not allowed to participate in the day-to-day -day activities, which means you can't be running the company actively. I imagine that's a way to keep jobs local for local Malaysians. One advantage of this visa, especially for retirees, is any foreign income that you bring into the country is tax-free. So your pension or social security or any other forms of income is not taxed. Lastly, the maximum age for dependents is 34 years old. Next, I'll go over the SMM2H or Sarawak Malaysia My Second Home Visa. The main differences between this and the MM2H visa is the financial requirements and also a residency requirement where you need to spend a certain amount of time for each year in Sarawak. To get this visa, you must be at least 30 years old and demonstrate that you have income and liquid assets. The income requirement is 10,000 ringgit if you're a couple or 7,000 ringgit if you're single. You also have to prove that you have 100,000 ringgit in liquid assets for a couple and 50,000 ringgit as a single. You must deposit 300,000 ringgit in a Sarawak bank which is roughly 80,000 US dollars as a couple or 150,000 ringgit or $40,000 as a single. Up to 40% of that deposit can be withdrawn after two years to pay for things like a down payment, healthcare, education, and other allowed expenses. The property requirement of SMM2H depends on your age. If you are between the ages of 30 and 39, you do not have to buy a house but you do need to have a child enrolled in the school on Sarawak. If you're over the age of 40, you do not need to have a child enrolled in the school system. You could instead purchase a property. In the city of Kuching, you must buy a property over 600,000 ringgit. Anywhere else on Sarawak, it's only 500,000 ringgit. Unlike MM2H, this is a five-year visa and could be renewed every five years. And supposedly after 10 years, you may need to apply for a new visa. The visa fee is 500 ringgit per person. The security bond is between 200 to 2,500 ringgit, depending on your country of origin. One benefit of this visa is that the main applicant can bring a spouse, unmarried children under the age of 21, and parents. However, the application for everyone else needs to be renewed annually instead of every five years. The main difference between this visa and the MM2H is that there is a residency requirement and you need to spend at least 30 days per year in Sarawak. Now, if you have a property there, then I imagine that's fairly easy. You go to your property, take a vacation and spend 30 days. I'm not sure if this is just the main applicant or anyone else on the visa. One downside of this is currently looks like the processing times are fairly long that can take up to 10 to 12 months to get approval. So those are the four main visas we're considering. Again, ideally, we would get the employment pass for my wife so she can continue working for her current company. I will get the digital nomad visa so that I can continue to run my company in Malaysia. And then our kids will be dependent on one of our visas. I know that was a very long video with lots of details, but I hope that was helpful to show you what visas are available for you. Please make sure to check the latest updates because these rules can change at any time. And make sure to consult a lawyer or an agent before you start the process yourself. 
If you have any questions about anything I shared today, please leave it in the comment and I'll be sure to answer it. There's a lot to figure out before we start our application process. So the more I know, the more I can share with you guys. Please remember to like, subscribe, or share this video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.